In this example, we will see how we can use mesh morphing to create a clue on a, a thick wall. The example is very simple. We have uh, a cantilever that is uh, a very simple beam represented by solid elements with fixed support to one side, loaded on the other edge. This is the stress solution that we get for the baseline shape. And uh, we want to add a clue in the center part of the panel and make the clue parametric. Uh, we use mesh morphing to apply the clue, but we want the clue geometry defined with design modeler. To do that, we have defined in designer modeler uh, an auxiliary geometry that is uh, this one, in which we have that uh, the clue geometry is parametric. In this case, we have two parameters that tell us where is the end of the clue and where is the beginning. So, uh, if we go into mechanical, we will have two geometrical model because we will have a solid body and here is hidden, but we have uh, also a surface body. The surface body is just used as an auxiliary geometry. Uh, a mesh is created and is constrained because we don't want to analyze nothing here, but our focus is on the solid uh, structure. The surface body is used to create the connection between the mesh and between the geometry we are controlling to position the clue. To do that, we are using RBF Morph, and the setup is very simple because I show you we have uh, the morphing plate that is the wall solid, uh, and we are controlling the fixed boundaries. I show you. So we tell the software that all these points have to stay fixed, and there is the outer wall that is the one that we want to reshape. I call here bumped face. The bumped face is selected as a surface of the solid and it is controlled using the auxiliary geometry. So we have an area that we are calling fixed slot, that is the surface we want to be preserved. We have another area that we have called extruded slot, that is this one that is controlled simply with this parameter, in this case by a Z movement. Uh, in a complex shape, we can get the same with the offset, so this is valid for carved bodies as well. And the effect is that we can have uh, an update of the bumped face that will be reshaped according to a new profile. Uh, in this case it's zero because it's linked to the parameters that is set as the baseline value. Uh, let's see the effect of this setup. So let's recall. We have RBF morph that automatically apply the morphing effect. The control of RBF morph is on the structure and we want to automate this. To automate this, we have defined three parameters. On the extrude load, we have tell the software that the delta Z is a parameter. This is the uh, intensity of the modification, so the depth of the clue. And the other two parameters are defined in the design modeler and are the position. If we see in Workbench what we get, this is already run, we can see that we have three input parameters. So the position of the clue that is adjusted here and the depth. Let's see the results as uh, expected. Of course, when we tweak the values, we will have a higher stress but we will have, of course, a substantial mass reduction. Let's see, for instance, this, uh, this one that is the more aggressive because it's uh, the wider uh, sides of the clue uh, with the maximum depth. To inspect this, we set this as current. And when we set this, we can inspect the effect of the morphing on the solution. So let's examine the results. Let's give a look to the results. There we go. So if we uh, turn on the equivalent stress, we can see the effect of the clue, and we can see that the maximum stress is not 
uh, at the uh, constraint location anymore, but has been moved on the area where we have the minimum uh, cross section as expected. We can also have a look to the internal shape of the clue we have created to understand if the quality of the mesh is good. We have prepared a section plane to do that and we can zoom in to understand the effect of the morphing. In this case the morphing is very aggressive because we have just two elements across the thickness. However, we are using parabolic elements so we have mid notes as well. Uh, it's worth to notice how the profile of the clue has been gently inserted. What is remarkable of this application is that the mesh morphing action is on a mesh using a shape and a geometry that is not prepared on the original mesh. So the original mesh is a regular fine enough mesh to represent the clue, but the clue has been introduced using an auxiliary geometry. With the same approach, of course, we can add on a complex assembly many clues and many shape parameters to position the clues and to select what is the intensity of the shape modification. And then we can steer the optimization. In this case, we have inspected just the effect of the three parameters using a table, but once we have the parameters in workbench, we can steer the optimization with our preferred optimization tool. Many thanks for your attention.